You know, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at Valentine's Day. Hobie reiterated that again this morning in the words of encouragement. And obviously, Valentine's Day is all about love. It is all about love. And as I started, you know, into that message, it's obvious that the Bible is all about love. It's, you, it's, it's inescapable. I looked at the, the numbers of uh, times in the Bible, I think it's four something, 400 times or something of that nature, that the word love is found in the Bible. You can truly say it's all about love. And if, you know, if the Bible is about love, is that the only thing that the Bible is about? Well, no. It's not the only thing the Bible is about. Uh, it has many things. The Bible has many things within it. Now, I'll say many, not like millions or hundreds of thousands. I mean, you know, you can narrow it down to probably ten. I don't know how we thought about it, but it has many different things. Between now and Easter, we'll look at a, another prominent theme. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You know, we can confidently say that it's all about sacrifice. Not taking away from the love thing. In fact, because of God's love for you, He provided a sacrifice for us. As I put this together and started thinking now, I said, oh my goodness, this is pretty good stuff. You know, the subject matter. I started looking at it. Hopefully it comes out as I go through this. You know, he provided the sacrifice. Love and sacrifice, seemingly two different things, are actually intertwined in the Bible. That's what John 3.16 is all about. Think about it. I'm going to read it to you. God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he sacrificed. I changed the gave to sac uh, changed, I mean changed. Substituted gave for sacrifice. He sacrificed his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God sacrificed his only begotten son. Sacrifice. Giving is a sacrifice. If you give up food and fasting, you're sacrificing. You put money in the collection plate. It is a financial sacrifice. I mean, that's money that you could spend on something else. Now that gets into another whole realm. We're supposed to give unto God. I mean, that's given, sacrifice. That's the whole thing here. When God gave us Christ, He sacrificed His only Son. Now we watched the episode of the, the first episode of the Bible. Uh, one of the most touching scenes, one of the most touching stories in all the Bible when, when God asked Isaac, to sacrifice his only son, the son of promise. I remember that night we were all moved watching that particular scene, the very end of that, and God provides the, the lamb for it. But God sacrificed his son. You know, we're going to look closely at Christ our sacrifice. Now we, we're familiar and we we don't I don't think we 
in modern New Testament times, and I'll talk about this a lot in the next couple few weeks, we don't think in terms of sacrifice. We say Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. That's common to say that. That's true. But he is also our sacrifice. And from now on through Easter. Because really, Easter is all about sacrifice. I come to this. I was thinking about okay, what am I going to do for Easter? What's you know coming up, and you know you, you really in, in a time of Lent, you you really need to start thinking about Easter and what it means and what happened. I, I said, well, well, you know, what is it? It just went on things. Thank you, Lord. It's all about sacrifice. It's all about sacrifice. But first. Let's ask ourselves, what is our sacrifice to God? See, this is what struck me. And I hope this comes out, and I hope my mind is a little clearer next week. If this comes out, but there's us sacrificing to God, which is common in the Old Testament. But God sacrificing for us. That struck me this week when I was putting this message in. I said, duh. If I not noticed that before, God sacrificing for us because it's always us sacrificing to God. That's what Lent is all about. We're in the season of Lent with a capital L. In the Old Testament, sacrificing to God was a prominent thing. Theme. Do a word search and BibleGateway.com and put a sacrifice, you're going to find overwhelmingly in the Old Testament. And it's literal, physical blood sacrifice. It was difficult. It was messy. And it was bloody. Next week, I will not bring I will not bring entrails into the church. But it crowd me. To be honest with you, it crossed my mind. I like to be an impact preacher, but I'm joined by my wife and a couple other ladies that no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. But uh, in the Old Testament, that's what you would have saw. You know, here's just a sampling of what the Old Testament sacrifices be like. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 24, you shall make an offer of all, excuse me, an altar of earth for me, and you shall sacrifice it on it, your burnt offerings, your peace offerings, your sheep, and your oxen. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. God said, make an altar, an earthen altar. And we'll probably, I'll probably look next week or the week after that into the details of making an altar, preparing an altar, putting the wood, putting the sacrifice on there a certain way, and all this. So you have to build an altar. Then you have to get an animal. You have to slaughter, you have to kill that animal. In a certain way. Then you do this with the entrails. You do this with the blood and all this kind of stuff. You know, sheep. What's a sheep? I mean, what is a sheep? I know what a sheep is. A size of sheep. What's a sheep? About the size of a big dog? Maybe? Mm -hmm. They're about? <coughs> Oxen? That's a cow. Steer. Bull. You're talking 1,000, 2,000 pounds? Offer it to God. Sacrifice it to God in a certain way. A precise, ritualistic way. Now, the preacher had to do that. We'll talk about that a little bit somewhere down the line. And the preacher had to put on his good clothes. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the, it was a, the robe or the coat tie or whatever. The 
preacher had to put on the, the, the clothes to do that. Uh, so again, that was, there was a lot to that sacrificial system that we really have no comprehension of because we don't have to do it. Thanks be to God we don't have to do it. And we'll talk about that as we move on through this. Even though animal sacrifices were done in Jesus' time, the New Testament really has little to say about Old Testament other than the fact that people would still come to the temple to sacrifice. That's what the, old, the whole money changer story was about. People were coming to buy sacrifices and, you know, they had to change money and what have you and they were getting ripped off and to buy a pigeon or a dove or something like that or a lamb to do the sacrifice. But in the New Testament, it goes from us sacrificing for God or to God to us, to, to Him sacrificing for us. That struck me. I mean, I know that. I knew that. But as I put this message together, I said, my goodness, the impact of that. All throughout, sacrificing to God. Now, He's sacrificing to us, essentially. That's what Easter's all about. I know, I don't know exactly what I'm going to preach, but I've got it on Easter Sunday. That's one of them I can't wait. You know, that message for Easter Sunday. God put the little kernel in my heart, in my mind, and I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. You know, remember, it's all about sacrifice. But again, going back to the Lent, it's still us sacrificing for God. Lent comes from the old English of ling, ling, lington. Which is L E N G T E N. Lington. 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 Yeah. Lington. <laughs> Lington Spring. You know, uh, you know, I guess if, if you were in the old English countryside in the 15, 1600, whatever time period it was at, and you were standing around out there in the in the village or something, it says, Oh, seems like we're in the Lington Spring. Yes. It's a fast day today. We're in the Lington Spring. Yes, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, it's Lington Spring. I think we can say for sure the Lington Spring is upon us. What does that mean? Longer daylight hours. That's it, that's what it means. That's the origin of it, the root of it. Lent, with a capital L, is the annual season of fasting, as Connie said, of fasting and penitence in preparation for Easter. It begins on Ash Wednesday, 40 days, primarily a Roman Catholic, Anglican, and other Protestants. Some Protestants do not practice Lent. Some do. Methodists, I don't know. I, I'd say it's 50-50 as far as Methodists. Lent, but the Episcopals, that, that was a big type of thing. And, and I asked Connie, in the history here in this church, not a lot as far as Ash Wednesday service. Y'all, Connie said she remembered a few times here or there somebody would do it. Please, yeah, Glenn, I, I think what Connie said. But what? It's not been a prominent thing. Ash Wednesday was not a big deal. In some churches, nothing wrong with it is or not. But I think we need to be mindful. Uh, of that season. Because the key words on any time of year is fasting and penance. I mean, it should be the other way around. Penance and fasting. Penance means to basically repent of your sins. We don't wait till spring, I mean, Ash Wednesday and all that. You know, that's what Mardi Gras is all about. Going and having a party and essentially, I've never been to Mardi Gras, but going and partying and having a good time before you start repenting and fasting, it's essentially what it 
That's just him. Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday, yeah. I mean, that's just party down and eat and pig out and all that kind of stuff. Because, man, we're going into a time of fasting and penance. Lord, forgive me for the party I'm about to do. I don't know. <laughs> but essentially, sacrificing food and repentance of sin. Again, we should be doing repentance of sin every day. Hopefully, you know, get to the point where, okay, there's no sin I need to repent of. If I go a day or two, oh, yeah, I have to repent again. Or maybe a week or two. You know, that's really our goal. The, you know, our time between sins should be longer. That's what we try to live a whole life. I mean, I, well, I'm right there with you. Sometimes I struggle with that. But that's what it's all about. That's a good thing to do. Sacrificing food? Yeah, heck yeah, I need to do it. You know, I really do. Angela and I talk about this all the time. We have food in our fingertips, our beck and call. Think about it. I mean, I'm, hey, I, I like food. You know, I, I, you know, we went to uh, Saigon Cafe yesterday. Well, you know what? Is anybody goes, is, is anybody even Saigon Cafe ever by the mall? Uh, mall of Georgia. Vietnamese, Thai place. And, well, that, I mean, they're the thing. They send me coupons. When I say $10 off a $20 bill, I'm over there. It's crazy. You're crazy not to go. <laughs> $20. So you go in there and get two meals for 10? I mean, my goodness. That's useless. It's a necessity. <laughs> but I curve. And that's a nice variety dish to get rid of all those cock fritters and all that stuff we ate down in the kids. Fasting. They say, John, and I meant to look this up. John Wesley always fasted one meal a week. That don't sound like a lot to us, but in John Wesley's time, that wasn't. Or, you know, you didn't go. There's no refrigeration. You just didn't go. Oh, what do I? What do? How many times do we tell ourselves, "What do I want to eat?" Or how many times do we choose between? Two or three items in our refrigerator. A lot? Am I, am I alone in this? I mean, I'm sure John Wesley's time, you know, you got, you had one item to choose from, and but he was sacrificed. Now, I want to say it was the Thursday evening meal. Is that right? Angel shaking her head. I think that's correct. For whatever reason, he would, he would fast on that Thursday. you brethren by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is your spiritual service of worship you know if it's all about sacrifice and it is let us present ourselves to God, holy, and living for Him. Repentance of sin should be a continual thing. God, I think if we fast, we will be healthier. And those who need to lose weight or want to lose weight, will lose weight. Throw in some exercise. Maybe that's your thing for Lent. Maybe I need to exercise for Lent. Well, whatever. You know, I, I don't want to get too much into this, but well, I guess I am. I'm all of it now. Uh, but God wants us to present ourselves to Him, repentant, sacrificing to Him to a degree, giving ourselves to Him. 